right, let's bring in part of our panel. We have Scott Eulinger, former CIA station chief. Great to see you, my friend. Thanks. Great to be back, John. All right, so Scott, last week you explained very succinctly, very nicely, why this phone call between Trump and Zelensky does not fall under the purview or the authority of the intelligence community, Inspector General. Can you just briefly explain that again to the viewers? Sure, John. <clears throat> the intelligence community inspector general is reporting on complaints related to intelligence. That means that if the president was speaking to President Zelensky about intelligence operations, budgeting, oh, we have a lot of spies working against Russia, that sort of thing, then that might be the grounds of someone in the intel community providing a complaint. But when the president, as he was, is merely conducting foreign policy with the Ukraine, the intelligence community has no business filing anything about that because that's the president's constitutional right to be running his own foreign policy. Couldn't have said it better, Scott. All right, let's bring in the rest of our panel. We were getting her set up. You know her, our good friend, Jesse Jane Duff, senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research and a 20-year Marine gunnery sergeant, retired Jesse Jane. You're on the ground in D.C. You're interfacing with people. You're now part of the Trump campaign, Women for Trump. I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired of this. This new whistleblower, put it in quotes, is Sueno. They're using the Kavanaugh playbook. They don't even care that Trump released the transcript. They already wrote the script. They're not even modifying it. And their little coup movie is playing out once again. This is just like reruns over and over again, that late night television where we see yeah. the same show we've seen 50 times. And the, the difference, though, is I actually enjoy those old shows. Mm -hmm. And this one I don't because it's becoming exhaustive. We know how this ends. It's kind of like a, a book you've read over and over again. You know how it ends. We are not going to uh, allow the Democrats to take out this president. The simple fact is this president did nothing wrong. When the intelligence community now is outing the president of the United States for doing his job, we've got a problem. Them. Talk about the deep state, you know, and it's, I love how the left is just coming to the rescue of the intelligence community. And I'm sitting back going, aren't you the guys that said the intelligence community was at fault with the Iraq war? Aren't you the ones that said when Bush lied, people died, but yet it was how many intelligence agencies that substantiated us going into Iraq? So now let's look at what's going on here. We had an intelligence community with the FBI dismantling and undermining, undermining the duly elected president with the Russia collusion and obstruction of justice uh, under the Mueller investigation, and now we've moved on to the Ukraine. The only person who's done anything wrong here is Joe Biden, and the President of the United States wants to know why this man was having an engagement with the Ukrainian government that was forcing them to fire a prosecutor because they were investigating his son. That is the story. But instead, they've decided that he had an inappropriate conversation with a foreign leader. This is all ridiculous. You know it, I know it, and every level headed person out there is just exhausted to a point of nauseam. Yeah, look, I think all of America has fatigue over this nonsense. They see a coup for what it is. Let me play you both a clip of Utah Congressman Chris Stewart. Now, he says Democrats aren't sad about impeachment going on. They're excited. They're giddy over it. Watch this. I have a lot of respect for her. She said something earlier that I just think I have to respond to. She says, there's been a lot of pain uh, over the last 10 days. Oh, my gosh, these guys are giddy over this. They're not painting over this. And it's not been the last 10 days. It's been three years. Three years they've been trying to impeach this president. Three years they've been looking for reasons to remove him from office. They're not pained by this. They're excited about this. And it's, and it, but it's terribly divisive for the American people. You know, I mean, Representative Stewart's right. Look, the American people, I think it's not even painful for them. They're just exhausted. They're exhausted, and they're starting. One of the blowback, I think one of the things that's going to blow back on Democrat Scott, is that they're educating the American people. Deny, 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 deny. And what's happening is Republicans, people on the right side of media like me, people like both of you, are putting out there on social media the facts. Glenn Beck. I don't know if you both watched it, did an outstanding two-hour special connecting the Ukraine dots. I used to work with Glenn quite a bit uh, in the early days that I got into this business. And when Glenn wants to do his whiteboard, his blackboard, few people do it better. Man, that was such a great investigative piece, Scott. He laid it out very nicely, and the American people are watching and learning. Very much so, and I think that uh, we're also going to see uh, probably reduced Democratic turnout because people, the Democrats 
don't really, uh, the, the rank and file, the people of the United States, I think a lot of them are going to be discouraged from even going out and voting about this. Because this is a, and this is a real black eye for the intelligence community, as uh, Jesse Jane pointed out. You know, this is to the CIA what the Mueller investigation was to the FBI, an incredible loss of prestige in the intelligence community. You know, Scott, let me ask you this, then, Jesse, I'm going to come to you. One of the counter arguments I heard, well, the CIA is rebelling against Trump because when Trump was elected and then inaugurated, he went over to Langley and he stood in front of the Wall of Stars and he talked about himself and he criticized the intelligence community, put people down. But I never heard Trump criticize the intelligence community, never heard Trump criticize the rank and file FBI agent. He criticized John Brennan. He criticized Jim Comey, Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, Andy McCabe. But I never heard the president put the rank and file people in the field, putting their lives in harm's way. Never once heard him do anything but support them, Scott. These are your former colleagues. Did, did you f hear the president say anything or watch him do anything that offended you as a former CIA officer in hot zones? Uh, no, I don't think so, John. But uh, again, another thing is that although uh, Trump properly excoriated Leaders, quote, leadership, unquote, such as John Brennan and James Clapper, which was absolutely appropriate. You have to remember that the amount of liberal progressives within the Justice Department, within FBI, within CIA is higher than a lot of people are willing to admit. There are a great deal of people, even at the middle level, who supported President Obama very much and automatically would look very skeptically at President Trump. That, uh, that's an unfortunate fact of life. You know, Jesse, you interface with the intelligence community, many, many think tanks, current, former people in intel, the military, federal law enforcement. Just how bad is the problem? Just how bad is the institutional leftism and the disdain for Donald Trump as an outsider? Well, from what I've seen, there's a lot of people that they actually recruit from liberal colleges and universities to go into these uh, intelligence agencies. The CIA has been notorious for this, so that you've got very well-educated lefties that come on board. I mean, look at the history of uh, Clapper. Look at the history of Brennan. Yeah. These people were lefties. Which one had been a communist? Was it uh, Brennan? Brennan. <laughs> Briefly yeah. voted for a communist? You know, there's a lot of shady history with some of these people. So when you're bringing people in that are lefties, and I'm not trying to accuse any lefty of not wanting to support the president of the United States. But the fact is, is that you've got a left-leaning ideology and what you feel is that you're smarter than the president of the United States. There's an arrogance that comes with it. Is this all officials? Absolutely not. You know, the people that are on the ground doing the investigative research really genuinely want the best for uh, the United States. But we often even see this in the military. The higher they go, the more politicized they get. And the ground, the ground runners like myself and your majors and your lieutenant colonels that are out there in the field are genuinely trying to protect the United States. But sometimes you get into the Pentagon and you get the echo chamber that starts happening. So I do want to address that Nancy Pelosi said that we don't go into Congress to impeach a president. This is just tragic. This is horrible. We don't want to do this. That's just not true. On its face, Rashid Tlaib was seen saying we are going to impeach this MFR. I'm sorry. That was appalling. She was screaming vulgarities yes. when she got elected. And not only that, we know AOC and her, the several of the squad have come in to clear stating their goal is to impeach the president based upon what this was two years ago when they got elected or I'm sorry a year ago when they got elected I'm just sitting back going don't try to lie to us anymore because we know this is not true it has gone on like you had noted in that uh, media clip three years from the time he yeah. got elected to now this has been their attempt well it's even before that I'll go back four years when he first started running and gaining traction the never Trumpers on the right were attacking the guy I mean this has been a concerted effort for the better part of four years going into five now right jesse scott stick with me when we come back the trump administration is pulling troops out of northeastern syria how's this going to affect the fight against isis 